book is called Helen of Pepper Pike, and it just came out combined with another uh, book called Brenda the Great. So um, I'll read you a little bit of Helen of Pepper Pike, and then I'll go to the uh, novel that I just finished, which is called Cheeky Swimsuits of 1957. And uh, to give you uh, the the other book that's uh, combined with Helen of Pepper Bike, Brenda the Great, I'll read a little blurb about that so you know what that is about. Uh, plain, overweight, and friendless, 16-year-old Brenda Blatt is exiled by her parents to a bleak school for troubled girls. Despised by her new roommates and scorned by the headmistress, Brenda suddenly finds her life turning around when she's befriended by the prettiest girl in the school. She experiments with dating and discovers she has a first-class singing voice. Brenda is becoming an admired leader at the school when an apparent double betrayal sends her reeling. Amid the hilarity, this rollicking novel explores the nature and power of friendship. So anyway, that's combined with this novel that I'm going to read a little bit of the beginning of. And they're available in a book that I've titled uh, Helen and Brenda, keeping it simple. Okay, Helen of Pepper Pike, Winter, January 1, New Year's Day and we've got the weather to prove it, sleet now and snow forecast for tonight, horrifying result from tentative contact with bathroom scale, gain of six pounds as zero restraint was demonstrated during the holidays, many cookies and several fruitcakes were consumed, eggnog was imbibed freely, also, a two-pound box of chocolate, chocolates, mixed soft centers, was mysteriously devoured. No one to blame but myself, as I had taken pains to conceal it in the pantry behind the canned soups, which my kids wouldn't touch with a barge pole. I'm now resolved to eat more sensibly this year, cutting back on meat, dairy, fat, desserts, pastries, chocolate, and booze, all the food groups that make life worth living read an article that we are living in an era of artificial plenty compared to our primitive ancestors, hence our tendency to overstuff ourselves, evilly abetted by our modern stretchy fabrics. Need more exercise, too, but Ohio winters are not conducive to healthy, invigorating walks. One wants to huddle inside and hike only to the refrigerator. Harkness, husband, and Kyle, son, watching yet another bowl game, it sounded like the TV jocks announced it as the bedwetter bowl, but I may have misheard. January 2nd, life back to normal. Harkness went to his office, Kyle drove back to Purdue, and I took down the Christmas tree. It now lies at the curb with its tinsel bits blowing forlornly in the wind. Shopped only for healthy food at the market. Expected to save a bundle, but have you priced tofu lately? And fish these days is priced like they're harvesting it out of some millionaire's koi pond. Made an experimental beef stroganoff for dinner with vegetarian ground meat and non-fat, non-dairy sour cream. Served it over brown rice instead of noodles. Harkness said it looked like the discharge from a sick beast and tasted worse. Rather, rather hurtful, but then Harkness has always prided himself on being brutally frank. He once told me that he would have preferred to marry his previous, previous fiance, but she broke off their engagement. I wonder why. Over the past 27 years, he's also found fault with every aspect of my behavior, taste in clothes, grammar, appearance, personality, spending, etc. He's a tax attorney, so perhaps being brutally frank is an asset in his profession. January 3rd. Looked at my high school yearbook again today. I do this to reinforce my commitment to skipping desserts. I need to enlarge that photo of me leading the cheers for the home came, homecoming game to poster size and paste it on my refrigerator, all framed in menacing razor wire. I also have moved my cheerleader's uniform. Yes, I still have it from the back of my closet to front and center. I see no reason why I shouldn't get down to a sensible size seven. A mere 15 pounds gone should do the trick. Scary thought, in 22 months I'll be 60. Where did all those years go, and how come they went by so fast? January 5, 
A chilly morning since the furnace wouldn't ignite. Harkness gave the thermostat a couple of swats and told me to call a repairman. A fellow identified as Devon on his tan uniforms. uniform showed up around 10.30. Handsome guy. Could have been George Clooney's 40-ish cousin. Informed me very soberly that my furnace board would have to be replaced. I told him to do whatever he thought best. Later, when heat had been restored, I served him a cup of coffee with the two top buttons of my blouse unbuttoned. <coughs> Devin wrote out his invoice, drank half the coffee, accepted my personal check, and departed. Don't know what I would have done if he had grabbed me. I suspect my reaction would not have involved loud screaming. Not my usual conduct around strange men. <coughs> Feeling rather embarrassed now. I blame it all on an overexposure at an impressionable age to Lady Chatterley's lover. <laughs> January 6. Went to the hairdresser today. Raphael's been agitating to add some red to my hair color, but I told him to stick to my usual rat fur brown. He was horrified when I told him I hadn't used any makeup for over a month. I didn't mention yesterday's hasty lipstick application for that disinterested furnace man. Raphael insisted makeup was a necessity to age 110. He said I was still a lovely woman who should do everything possible to look her best. <clears throat> nice to hear, but when, then he's a guy who depends on flattering his clients for tips. And he's never met my husband. I could walk around made up like Liz Taylor and Cleopatra, and I doubt Harkness would even notice. Thank God I never smoked like my friend Gabby. She smoked for 40 years, she supposedly quit last year, and has skin like a coal miner. Gabby's in real estate sales, so she has to slather on the cosmetics with a trowel. From 10 feet away in a dim room, she still looks fairly decent. She has a pretty name, Gabrielle, but her parents should have figured it was going to get shortened into some abomination. She's a total chatterbox, so in her case, the, nick the nickname fits. I have one of those dreary names, Helen, that can't be truncated without giving offense. Named after my mother's whiny grandmother who drove everyone nuts for 86 years, then took forever to die after she got cancer. My grandmother was reputed to be a doll, but she died before I was born, car wreck. Uncle Tommy was driving drunk and killed his own mother, gave him yet another reason to imbibe. My last name, courtesy of Harkness, is Spall as in your concrete has a problem. January 8th, Harkness surprised me by getting amorous last night. He does that about as often as he trims his nose hair. <laughs> These days his erections are about as firm as my breasts. Still we manage to get it on after a fashion. It's nice to be desired by a man, even if it is only Harkness. <laughs> I, I used to worry that he was getting some on the side, but then I realized that in his world, sex has been replaced by golf. I'm not sure what replaced it for me. Maybe nothing. January 11, a new low in Monica, Monica cuisine. Some sort of vegan casserole involving lentils, cabbage, and diced okra. Oh, God. Healthy, I suppose, but everyone stared at it in horror. Harkness took one bite, then left to have dinner at the country club. <laughs> I whipped up a quick salad cast a microwave to frozen pizza. Monica's been living here rent-free ever since she got her master's in film two years ago. All I ask is that she run the vacuum once in a while and make dinner one night a week. She'll be 25 in a few months. No job, no boyfriend, no social life to speak of, and forever bickering with her sister. I keep dropping hints that a person wishing to pursue a film career might want to consider living in Los Angeles instead of a leafy suburb of Pepper Pike of Cleveland. But she claims that the field is too competitive out there. Very true, except in California they do make movies, whereas in Cleveland they make auto parts and toxic chemicals. <laughs> As a favor to me, Gabby once hired Monica to shoot a video of one of her listings. The lighting was so somber and the camera angle so strange Gabby said it made that lovely Shaker Heights home look like the setting for a horror movie. <laughs> I don't know why my children turned out so creative. I've always been extremely practical, and Harkness has never had a creative impulse in his life. 
January 17, found another dead in the beast, my minivan. Cast a denied she hit anything, but I know it had to be her. She just got her license, she's 16, and drives like she does everything else with crazed abandon. She was the worst baby in the world and went straight down till from there. Strictly an accident and very narrowly dealt with. On more than a few occasions, I wondered why I canceled that appointment. I was slightly worried at the time that she might not be Harkness's child, but now she manifests all of his most irksome traits, including a fierce need to be brutally frank about my perceived shortcomings. First, she suggested a snow plow and did it, but I pointed out we hadn't had any plowable snow for weeks. Then she said I probably dented the door myself by absentmindedly closing it with my massive butt. <laughs> if I ever said anything like to that to my mother, I'd have been slapped silly on the spot. My butt, allowing for its temporary post-holiday augmentation, is still within the normal range for a woman of my age and height. Costa, of course, has practically no butt. Picture a slim nine-year-old boy with perky breasts and way too much eyeliner. That's my teenage daughter. <laughs> January 19. Dropped a hint at breakfast that the beast may have to be replaced soon. Harkness sighed and said that was not a good time, that this was not a good time to buy another car. Very predictable response. If everyone waited for Harkness to decide to buy, the economy would have ground to a halt long ago. <laughs> I pointed out I wasn't asking for a new car. Harkness grunted, that goes without saying. My husband thinks only idiot spendthrifts buy new cars off the lot. He provide, prefers to buy three-year-old used cars, thus saving a fortune in depreciation. I often think car magazines should offer special subscriptions for tightwads like Harkness. They could mail out their magazines with a three-month delay. <laughs> I'm done with minivans, I pointed out. I'm not a soccer mom, a rude chortle from Costa. She is such a clone of her father. I don't think I had any genetic input into that child at all. <laughs>